and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. The first Lilo and Stitch was an interesting piece of Disney history, as it stands as the most successful and most popular film they've done in the 2000 decade. Maybe not necessarily their best, since many of the moments involving Stitch and the aliens do feel like they're geared more exclusively for kids, but it still stands as one of Disney's most heartwarming films and what launched the careers of both Chris Sanders and Dean DeBlois to become film directors. And then you have Stitch Has a Glitch, which is actually one of the three direct-to-DVD sequels that Stitch spun off. But what makes this one stand out is that it's more connected to the original film and not related to the TV show. But now with Stitch having a few bugs in his system, can he cheat his way to making this great? Or will the movie end up being too broken to watch? Let's find out. The Story Yes, as the title would suggest, Stitch has a little problem that can make him go haywire so the movie should be about trying to figure out his glitch. You'd think that would be such a simple conclusion about the story, yet somehow that's too complex for a Disney sequel like this. Instead, the film decided that the main plot should be about Lilo trying to prepare to enter this hula competition. The elements that involve the glitch are more packaged as a side plot where Jumba and Pleakley are trying to figure out how to put the energy back onto Stitch before there's none left in him. Considering how this movie is ridiculously short by only going for an hour, it feels like the filmmakers took two scripts from the TV show and decided to work them onto this one feature. It is true that there are a bit of connections between Lilo's hula story and Stitch's glitch problem, but it's also very easy to separate them and just interpret that Stitch's glitch when he's with Lilo is another experiment. Admittedly, I can see how the main story can work out by developing more into the characteristics of Lilo. However, like I said before, since it feels like two episodes mixed together, that story feels like it can work as a decent episode of the series. But for a movie, it doesn't offer enough to make it feel strong and worth being a plot for a follow-up to Lilo and Stitch. As for the glitch plotline, it's obvious that it doesn't do a lot and it feels like it's just an excuse for the movie to have Stitch cause mischief. In fact, that plot has some glitches of its own, since it barely explained how the situation is being handled. Sure, Jumba talks about how Stitch has that glitch in the first place, but why does he have to keep it a secret from Nani and Lilo? And why is there no explanation for the ending? But how is it possible? It's not. There's also another plot where David is trying to impress Nani with the help of Pleakley, but that's just pointless filler to fit in more comedy that consists of characters wearing goofy costumes and everybody talking over each other. Maybe the story can work as a few episodes of the series, but they're probably not meant for a movie. The Animation The closest thing that this movie can get to the levels of the original is the animation. Considering that this film was done during the end of Disney Toon Studios' legacy of direct-to-video sequels, this quality is significantly higher than many of the previous films. The biggest thing that it did to get the animation right is to visually keep the spirit of the original. The entire production design still stays true to the style of Chris Sanders, where everything from the backgrounds to the look of the characters to the effects all have a more round shape with very few edges even with the design of the characters. While it doesn't add any new ones to spice up the story or anything, they all still respectfully look like how they were in the original film. As for the character animation, this is probably the film's strongest component. I mean, sure, you'll find that there are a lot of unfunny and pointless moments, but it's easy to spot where the animators put up their most creative work with Pleakley in all those dresses and Stitch whenever he glitches out. Oh, no. There are even some smaller elements that it took from its predecessor in order to get the details right. These include the backgrounds where everything is done in watercolor and using computer animation for the alien spacecraft like Stitch's hover car and Jumba's ship. While it does a good job with the looks, the only downside is that it's still a direct-to-DVD film. Sure, it's done better than the others, but it doesn't have that master quality that Disney did for the original. 
It's more like a knockoff of Disney's animation where you end up with a cheaper alternative with the movements not as smooth, the backgrounds look more like watercolor, and more. Plus, since there's no real new component to this film, a lot of what's good in here was already done in the first Lilo and Stitch. The animation got a bit of a downgrade, but it just went from great to good. The characters. Although not all of them are here, you do get some of the main ones returned for the sequel, and while some of them are back as their familiar selves, others feel more like a burden than a blessing. You first have Lilo that stays true to her character in the first film, where even if the film gave her a competitive trope for the whole hula contest, it still remembers that she's just a kid. She can be easily agitated with a short temper, but can show that it's because she still has a lot to learn, on top of a bit of naivety. Also, she does have a bit of determination to win the hula contest not just to be the best in her class, but to prove to her deceased mother that she is capable to carry the family legacy. One interesting note about Lilo here is that her voice actress, Devi Chase, is the only one who didn't return because she was too busy with voicing the TV show. Instead, they brought in her friend, Dakota Fanning, and she actually does a nice job replacing her voice. Ohana means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets, gets left, left behind. This is the exact bench where Elvis sat in Blue Hawaii. Oh yeah, that's him. As for Stitch, he's more of the same as he was before, but this time trying his best to remain good while the glitch would spontaneously happen. However, this one feels more like whatever works with him is because the filmmakers took it from the original. As it does remain true to the stars, the other characters, however, is where things can fall flat, making them both simpler than they were before and much more unpleasant to watch. Nani is now just the stressed out guardian of Lilo and Stitch, Jumba is the scientist that's trying to solve Stitch's problem, and then there's Pleakley. He tries his hardest to add in so much comedy onto this, but it ends up making the movie feel more awkward and annoying than enjoyable. In fact, they only brought back David just so the alien can have more material to work with. When the characters work, they can help bring in the charm of the original. When they don't, they bring in the usual package you get from these direct-to-video sequels. Lilo and Stitch 2 Stitch Has a Glitch may not be one of the worst Disney sequels in the levels of either Cinderella 2 or Belle's Magical World, but it's still a shallow movie that's just made to cash in on the success of the original. While it does get a few things right, like the animation is nice and Lilo and Stitch themselves are still enjoyable to watch, it does hold on to the usual issues that comes with being a direct-to-video sequel including a cheap story that feels like it's made for television, underdeveloped and pointless characters, and humor that's more irritating than funny. My only recommendation is that if you're a huge fan of Lilo and Stitch to where it's one of your favorite Disney movies and absolutely adore the characters, then maybe you'll end up liking this one. If not, then it's better to just stick with the first film. As you'd expect from these sequels, this one is a pretty glitchy film. But I guess the best thing you could say about it is that, well, at least it's harmless. guys, this is Animat. It's actually pretty interesting that I would actually end up reviewing Lilo and Stitch 2 Stitch Got a Glitch and actually pick that out from the animation hat because I remember there was at one point when people would bring that up so much to me and how much that they enjoyed it and loved it and all that kind of stuff. You see, it was actually back when I did the top 10 of the worst animated sequels. Now, I didn't specifically put in Lilo and Stitch 2 onto the list, but uh, a little bit of a spoiler if you haven't actually seen that top 10, but one of them that I included was some of the Disney sequels. I didn't put in all, but just 
some of the directed DVD Disney sequels that they have made. And there are a few examples that I would go and put in that would fit onto the list. Uh, some of these would include Hunchback of Notre Dame 2, Cinderella 2, and so many others. And then for a brief moment, I would mention Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch Got a Glitch. And out of all the movies that I put in on the list of the top 10 worst animated sequels, that's probably the one that people got the most outrage out of that they were legitimately mad that I included that film onto the list. Like, how dare you put in Lilo and Stitch 2? That movie is amazing. How dare you? Dead to dead. And all that kind of stuff. And honestly, looking at it, though, I think it really does depend on how much you love Lilo and Stitch. Because at the end of the day, with that movie, it really is made to just capitalize on the success of Lilo and Stitch 2. And I can understand how someone who is a fan of Lilo and Stitch would actually get attached to something like the sequel because, one, the animation is not too bad. Again, it was actually made at the end of uh, Disney Toons period where they were making nothing but sequels. So the animation did get a massive upgrade compared to a lot of the predecessors. That and also, I would say that with the characters of Lilo and Stitch, they actually do work out. They are being themselves, and they are being the type of characters that they enjoyed in the original film. So yeah, like this is the kind of film where if you are a Lilo and Stitch fan, then this is an absolute bonus. It's not as good as the original, but at least it's something that is worth entertaining and um, would show you more of just Lilo and Stitch doing crazy shenanigans and stuff like that and going through little little adventures around Hawaii. But if you're not a Lilo and Stitch fan, not to say that I'm not a fan, I do think that it is a, a really good movie that Disney made, but it's just like, it's not among like my top 10 favorite Disney films. But it, like I said, if you're not a huge fan of Lilo and Stitch, then this one is just your standard directed DVD Disney sequel where it's just made more for the fans and to just really cash in on the movie's success. But anyways, that is pretty much it with Lilo and Stitch 2. And now it is time that we shall go and move on to a Patreon request. Yes, we're going to be doing another one of those, and this time it's going to be from Red Bandit 101. So I just want to say right now that if you guys would like to be like Red Bandit and you want to go and support my work while getting some awesome rewards at the same time, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and I would put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. So with all that said... What is it that the Red Bandit actually suggested me to go and review? Well, when it comes to this film in particular, this is just one of the two films that is actually a part of probably what is known as one of the biggest battles of animated movie versus animated movie just clashing together. And throughout history and animation, especially in the more recent years, like after the 2000s and stuff like that, there have been plenty going on. Uh, some of these would include The Wild vs. Madagascar, Despicable Me vs. Megamind, and also Coco vs. The Book of Life. But with this one that I will be reviewing, I've already looked into the Pixar film, but now let's check out what DreamWorks has to offer. Elvis is trying to tell us to do a hula about a chicken. <laughs> no, he's not. 